Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to our worship here from St Chad's on this third Sunday of Advent. As our preparations for Christmas uh, probably pick up the pace a little bit more, we still nevertheless are reminded to wait for the coming of Christ the light of the world. Today we remember especially the ministry of John the Baptist in preparing the way for others to receive God in their midst. Josh will share with us a sermon later on, encouraging us to think about how we can be lights in this world as we follow Jesus Christ. We begin our worship with a song which may be new to many of you, a song called Longing for Light, We wait in darkness.
Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God our Father, you gave to Zechariah and Elizabeth in their old age a son called John. He grew up strong in spirit, prepared the people for the coming of the Lord, and baptised them in the Jordan to wash away their sins. Help us who have been baptised into Christ to be ready to welcome him into our hearts, and to grow strong in faith by the power of the Spirit. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liber liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They would be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation, he has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to St John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? 
He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptising if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered, I, I baptise with water. Among you stands one you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptising. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Lights. Uh, it would be at this point, uh, if we were in church, I would ask you to put your hands up and say who's put their Christmas decorations up yet, the tree or indeed any lights uh, outside of their houses. Um, for, for the sake of this, soon, you, can, you can nod or, or shake your heads at home. Um, my street have gone a bit bonkers this year. Uh, they're, it's, they're just everywhere, decorations. They started as early as November uh, in, in some cases. Uh, and even me, now you'll come to know that over, if you've not guessed already, I'm fairly tight-fisted. Um, but even I've uh, splashed out and bought some Christmas lights for my little terrace house this year. But why do we do it? What drives us to this insanity? I mean, for me to spend a whopping £8.99 pence on 30 metres of multi-setting coloured Christmas lights, uh, you know, from, from the range in Stockport, I'm obliged to say that other retailers are available at this point. So, so why do we do it? I suppose in a way, just as we put up physical lights outside our homes uh, to cheer us and our neighbours up in preparation for Christmas, Let's have a think and what lights do we, as Christians, give off over Advent? Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 to 15, Christ says in his Sermon of the Mount that ye are the lights of the world, a city that is set high on a hill that cannot be hid. Neither does a man light a candle and put it under a bushel, no, he puts it on a candlestick so that all within the house might see it. Quite a clear task he gives us there, isn't it? So are we, like John the Baptist, holding the light of Christ into the darkness to show his glory and to the path to Christ to others. Like John the Baptist says, it isn't our light that, that we're shining up, is it? It's, it's the light of Christ that it is that we are holding up. He is the light. I mean, it's just as well, because if it was my light, uh, it would be fairly dim. We're not doing it so people would say, gosh, isn't that Josh Gaskell a thoroughly good egg? You know, it's all goodness points to Christ and it should all be to his glory and to point others to him. We know what we need to do. But how to go about it? How can we make a difference as one person? I'll use a little example. When I was little, um, the village lights um, provided by the council in Glyn Dovedwy, uh, the village where I grew up, uh, were, were fairly feeble, um, if, if non-existent, to be honest. Uh, so, the villagers, household by household, took it upon themselves to protect their little homes with Christmas lights and sort of Christmassy gnomey things uh, to cheer up the village. Over the years, this spirit of light and duality 
uh, caught on and before you knew it the uh, village hall committee uh, decided to club together uh, and buy a great big Christmas tree and put some lights on it and really decorate the green between the hall and, and, and the main road. It, it was quite spectacular to be fair. But surely does the same not go for us as Christians? If we just stand by waiting for the powers that be to propagate and emit the light and love of Christian values or heavens forbid Christianity itself wouldn't be waiting a lot longer than the four or five months uh, weeks rather leading up to Advent wouldn't we the true light that lightens the world as John the Baptist says in verse 1 uh, chapter 1 verse 8 lives in us and therefore we've been privileged enough to receive that light into our hearts, that love, that peace, that forgiveness, that salvation, that joy. Why wouldn't we want to share it? Isaiah in our first Old Testament reading this morning, uh, he gives us two choices. Choice number one, are we going to be like the Israelites of old and lament uh, and despair over the destruction of Jerusalem? Or perhaps in our case, lament over the seemingly gradual drift away in our nation from a church-going and Christ-loving Britain over the last half century? Or will we rejoice for the Lord God of hosts is with us? God has made this Church of England great in the past and just as the night is at its darkest before the dawn, Bayek will the good Lord make his kingdom here on earth great again. Therefore, with this love, joy, hope, and thankfully not through our own feeble strengths, but relying on the Holy Ghost as our arsenal, let us cast aside our bushels and flood light upon this, our community of Lady Barn, this Advent. The Archbishop of Canterbury this year has called for a re-evangelisation of the nation. Very catchy uh, little slogan he's got there, even rhymes. But, much like the lights in my village, the real work starts here with us, doesn't it? We are the engine drivers. It is here where the wheels hit the tarmac. All the national or diocesan directives mean precious little to Joe and Josephine Bloggs down the street. It's up to us to shine that light. We are the children of God that our neighbours and friends will come to contact with on a daily basis. Now, fake not nor fear. Uh, I'm not suggesting that uh, we all go around wearing camel skins uh, or eat wild locusts like John the Baptist which is uh, just, just as well because I come out in a bit of a rash even wearing a woolen pullover jumper uh, for too long um, or indeed stand outside the co-op down the road with, with a bell and a sandwich board shouting to our neighbours repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand now there are little ways aren't there how we can shine a light for God a Christmas card to perhaps that crotchety neighbour uh, that nobody's particularly keen on or, um, despite of COVID, something that we could do maybe, uh, if not only tokenistic and perhaps a little bit naive on my behalf, but why not peel a few extra sprouts this Christmas and, and take a dinner round to someone on Christmas Day who you know is either struggling particularly or lonely this year? I mean, imagine, again, just a bit of food for thought, pun the pun, uh, if each household from a congregation like ours did that it would be on average between 33 to 34 um, lonely people touched in our parish it would be 9,928 across Manchester diocese and 870,900 that's just a couple of thousand shy of a million uh, people touched over England that's a lot of people who will have felt the love and light of Christ touched and hopefully planted a small seed in their hearts. Now, only, if only one-tenth of those people decided to nurture uh, or do something about that seed, perhaps maybe 
talk to you about it or you, who knows come along to the local parish church that's still a whopping lot of people isn't it even if it's just a tenth from the smallest of mustard seeds grow the largest of trees so whatever our plans are this advent let us find our corner however big however small find an act for Christ however grandiose or subtle and let us shine for Jesus this advent in the name of Christ Amen I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we long for the coming of Jesus Christ and his kingdom, let us pray. Lord, prepare us for your coming in this your church. Clean out the unnecessary clutter of our church life, the piles of dead habits, the cupboards full of prejudice, the cobwebs of compromise. Open our church to the free flow of your refreshing spirit. Give to our parish and the church throughout the world the vision and hope we need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, prepare us for your coming in this your world. Come, drive away despair from our politics. Revive our dreams of justice. Restore our passion for what is good, right and true. We pray especially for those who seek to make peace in our world. Those who bring reconciliation and hope in places of war. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord, prepare us for your coming in this our community in Manchester. In the problems of our locality, help us to pursue your way of love. May this love motivate our care for our neighbourhood. May this love heal the social ills which often drag us into despair. We especially call to mind those who work in this locality, those in our local food bank, those who work in our night shelters, and those who support families in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, prepare each one of us for your coming in all our needs and our fears. We hold before you those who have asked for our prayers, those in our community we know who are isolated and alone, those who are suffering and in pain. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Advent Lord, whose coming grows ever nearer, 
We long for the day when we are united with all your people in the perfection of your kingdom. We pray for our loved ones who have departed this life and all those who mourn at this time. We hold before you those whose anniversaries fall at this time. We pray especially for Andy Lewis, for all his friends and all who've known him at St Paul's Withington and at St Elizabeth's Reddish. Come Lord Jesus and bring your comfort and your hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Blessed Mary, St Chad, John the Baptist and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Collect for this third Sunday of Advent. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, Grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make you ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you very much for joining me for our worship here from St Chad's this morning. We continue to offer our services online, but also in our building again, uh, and we'll continue to meet on Sunday mornings uh, as the year goes on. We'll also be holding services at Christmas on Christmas Day at 10 o'clock if you'd like to join us for a service of communion. And if you'd also like to come and hear something of the Christmas story in preparation for Christmas, on the Sunday before Christmas, that's the 20th of December, We'll be having a special service in the evening at six o'clock, which will be a crib service, uh, also with some carols, uh, which will be sung for us. So do join us for the worship over this Advent and Christmas season if you're able to do so. Also, uh, look out for our online talent show, which will be on YouTube uh, next Saturday evening. I'll post some information on our Facebook page and you'll also see a link uh, all about that talent show uh, in the description with this video. It's not too late to submit uh, an entry for our talent show if you'd like to. It could be anything from a Christmas recipe to a song or a poem or reflection on what Christmas means to you. As our worship draws to a close here, we receive God's blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.
Let's go.